verse 12, we're going to drop down. Yeah, let's drop down to verse 11. Last week, I, I preached verse 9. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Amen. Today, I'm after verse 11. Uh-huh. 
Words synonymous with slothful are idle. Uh -huh. You know what it means to be idle? Yeah. He ain't doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Inactive. Mm -hmm. Slow moving. We're talking about slothful now. Slow moving. You know, when it's something you don't really want to do, you're slothful about doing it. Amen. You'll drag your feet. Yes, You'll go kicking and screaming. Yes. If I know I'm not getting a tax return, I'm not running down to H and R Block to file my taxes. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Take it back, the, the deadline don't catch me because I'm not getting a return anyway. Right. All right. Yeah. You know, slothful is something you really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. well. You will be slothful in things you don't see any value in. Amen. Yeah. First lady likes to watch Criminal Minds. Right. I don't like that show. Right. She tries to force me to watch one episode a month. I wait till the end of the month. Right. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge I wait till the end of the month. I'm slothful about doing no, I don't want to watch that. Uh -huh. Slothful about doing it. Slothful. When you don't see the value of something, you'll be slowful about doing it. All right. So you're going to be slow to do it. Uh, it won't be at the forefront of your mind. It's going to be somewhere in the back. Uh -huh. Come on now. Behind a lot of other things. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> to be slowful in the business of God, listen, hope, listen carefully. To be slowful in the business of God means stagnation. Yeah. Look around. To be slothful in the business of God, blessed hope, means stagnation. Yes. Look around. Mm -hmm. It means stagnation. To be slothful in the business of God means to lose momentum. Yes. You will lose momentum when you get slothful in the business of God. Yes. Amen. Things were once coming together quickly and now all at once it has come to a screeching halt. And if you are intelligent, you will start looking around saying, what's going on? Amen. What's happening? What's happening? To be slothful in the business of God, watch carefully. I've been telling you this is the month of testimony. To be slothful in the business of God means to miss your season. All right. Amen. You will miss it. Amen. Because you weren't serious about the business of God. Amen. And so something God had for you, if you're not on fire about it, it'll pass you by. Come on now. Amen. It, it'll, it'll pass you by. You'll say, I'm waiting on God. You don't know. You, you, many people don't even know that they missed their season. Come on. They see good things happening for other people. They don't know what's supposed to happen for them too. But they are slothful Come on, Pastor. in the business of God. Soulful in the business of God. Mm -hmm. We all know that God is not bound by time. Mm -hmm. But timing means something to God. Yes. It does. Yes. Yes, Watch it does. me carefully here. When God tells you to do something and you do it without delay, it means something to him. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. It, it means something to him. It, it means he can depend on you. All right. It's good when you can depend on somebody to be prudent. Yeah. I know I got some supervisors in here. Oh, it's yeah. good when you can depend on somebody to be timely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to chase you down about what I asked you to do at 8 a.m. All right. I asked you to do it at 8 a.m. By 10 a.m. it was on my desk. Yeah. Some of us be making excuses talking about I get it tomorrow. Uh -huh. Come on, pal. <laughs> Informed about it at 8 a.m., we don't turn it in until almost 5 o'clock tomorrow. Mm. All right? Mm. That's slowful. That's good. Slowful. <laughs> it's good when you can depend on somebody to be prudent and timely. Uh -huh. I don't have to repeat myself. Mm -hmm. Come it's on. already done. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we want God to move like that for us. Yeah. But God got to send us confirmation 15 times. God has to send us confirmation 15 times before we're finally prudent about his business. God loves timely people. Please don't miss this, y'all. 
Please don't miss this because being timely is the difference between stepping into your season and missing it. Come on, Pastor. Tell you what I know. Tell you what I know. Abraham was timely. He was timely. God said, pack and leave. And without delay, Abraham was out the door. Amen. He said, leave your father's house. Go to a place that I will show you. He didn't even know where he was going. He was packed. And walking down the street. Some of us, we need too many details. <laughs> well, you know, we really didn't plan this. Can you walk by faith? Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. It, it just kind of seemed like we did it last minute. Can you walk by faith? Because when the Spirit tells you to do something, oh, yeah. it don't come with details. Yeah. It comes with a command. Yeah. Some of us, we need all the details. I need to know who, what, when, where, why, who all going to be there. And the Holy Spirit is saying, you know what, forget it. Hey. Come on. That's why God just gives you a command. He don't give you no details. Amen. He wants to know if you're going to move right then and there. Guess what? If you Amen. don't, he's got somebody else. Amen. Yes, he do. That's why many are called. Few are chosen. Many are slowful. Lazy. Other stuff on their mind. It's not important enough. And you miss your season. Mm -hmm. You miss your season. Yes. You miss your season. God didn't have to keep going back to Abraham's house. You know I told you to leave. <laughs> you, you know I told you to leave. And this is some of us. God has to keep coming back to us. Hey, you know I told you to do something six months ago. You still ain't did it. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Being slowful will make you miss your season. Mm. Yeah. It, it, you'll miss it. Yeah. Because we haven't been obedient. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing to be slow. Slowfulness will cause you a season of suffering when you should have been blessed. Amen. I told y'all the story about my car. My dad said, you need to put this antifreeze in this car. And I said, I'll do it in the morning. I missed the time. Temperatures dropped to freezing, bust the engine block. A simple five minute thing turned into a $2,000 bill. Yeah. And it turned into months with no car. Uh, Amen. Timing. Timing means something to God. Yeah. Yes, it does. We put off God too much and we suffer for it. Yes. We suffer for it. Yes. When you hear God speak, if he say do it now, do it now. Amen. Do it quickly. Don't you ask nobody because folks that didn't hear what you heard, they'll talk you out of it. All right. All right. Folks that didn't hear what you heard, they will talk you out of it. And now you listening to somebody else. You miss the season. You miss the timing. Oh, yeah. Slowfulness is the enemy of timing. I'll do it in a minute. And this is coming from a procrastinator. But when it comes to God's business, I don't procrastinate. Amen. Amen. That's why it looks like stuff comes out the blue. But wait a minute, we didn't plan. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, Amen. Your need for details don't move me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Because I know what I heard. <laughs> Glory to God. And so that's why it's very important to walk by faith, and not by sight. Not by sight. We'll be trying to put too much stuff together. Yeah. And the window is closing. Uh -huh. God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. He loves you. But baby, if he got to leave you behind, right. yeah. he'll leave you behind. He'll come back and get you. But he'll leave you behind. Yeah. <laughs> it's a house word. This for us. Come on. Come on. And this, this slowfulness applies to your personal life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Has anybody ever needed yes, to file does. paperwork? Or something like that, and you was dragging your feet about doing it, uh -huh. and then before you knew it, the deadline had come and go, mm -hmm. and now you're knocking on the door, saying, "Can you please? Can you maybe no?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely not. Slowfulness will cost you. It'll cost you your season. <laughs> it'll cost you your blessing. Yes, it will. I'm telling you, it'll cost you. Yeah. Amen. And if you hard-headed and don't like sound doctrine, get ready, baby. That bed's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I believe God enjoys punishing uh, foolish people. Amen. Just, just you know, like light affliction, nothing too crazy. I believe he enjoys punishing foolish people. Mm -hmm. Like he gets a kick out of it. Like all these people told you to do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You know, just a, a slap across the back of the neck. I yeah. told you. All these people attempt giving you sound doctrine and you arguing. Get ready, baby. Amen. I don't Amen. even try to convince people anymore. I don't even. <laughs> Say, so, you know what? Do what you want to do. But yeah, when you right. get in trouble, don't you come over here. All right. Because I told you, I'm not going to suffer for your bad decision making. Amen. I need you to get it together. Do not be smokeful in business. Laziness in business don't mix. Procrastination and business don't mix. Abraham wasn't slowful in the business of God. He didn't need all the details. It wasn't planned. It wasn't convenient to his schedule. Now come on. <laughs> wasn't convenient to his schedule to leave his house. Just pack and move. Move where? I'll show you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Pack and move where? Where am I going? I'll show you. You got his bag over his shoulder. Like, just start walking? Yeah, start walking. Start walking. I'll tell you when to stop. i tell you when you get to the spot. Can you imagine? <laughs> All right. <laughs> he didn't need all the details. It wasn't planned. It wasn't convenient. To his schedule, a lot of people are slow on the business of God because they got a schedule. Right. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. They got an itinerary. Yeah. Right. I got to be here. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah. And they put God's business on the back burner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put God's business on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Abraham had to leave some people behind. Leave your daddy's house. Mm -hmm. He had to miss some functions and some activities. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. He had to miss some gatherings yes. and some parties. Yes. <laughs> he had to skip out on some things. I can't stay here with y'all. I got to be serious in my business for the Lord. It's a good time. I wish I could be there, but God bless you. Go. God is calling All me. Right. I got to be in the right position. Because if I'm not in the right position, I might miss my season. Fool little folks that ain't going nowhere anyway. If I live right. here now and come back in five years, you will be in the same church needs you, you blow your church off for people that really don't like you. Come on. Whoa. 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 Oh yeah, I love my church. Ain't at no functions. Ain't available for nothing except for service twice a month. Oh, but I love my church. Let's go do some real ministry. Well, you know, I'm going out of town. And <laughs> I gotta go turn on my bed. <laughs> he had to miss some functions and some activities to be timely for God. Jesus was the same way. Jesus was on a mission. To do ministry is a mission. Don't get it twisted. It's, it's a mission. Jesus made people that was depending on him wait. All right. Yeah, yeah. Because he was that zealous yes. for God. Mm -hmm. I know that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Jesus' zeal was for God and not people. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. His zeal was for God and not people. Amen. My zeal for God burns hotter than your need of me. Jesus traveled from place to place doing his father's business. He had to tell people many times, I can't stay here yes. with you. Mm -hmm. He left his own mom and dad and said, I got to be about my father's business. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. They're looking everywhere for Jesus. I was just in the temple teaching. I got to be about my father's business. Yeah. 
when it came time to begin his ministry, he, <laughs> he, he left his mama, kissed her goodbye. Mm -hmm. mm. Come on, <laughs> he had to tell people many times, I can't stay here with you because I'm needed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I can't run back to you because I'm needed here a little longer. All right. He made people wait. His zeal for God was so hot that he let Lazarus die. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Lazarus was his friend. That was his buddy. Mm -hmm. His role now. He loved Lazarus. Yes, he did. Yes. But because his zeal for God and his zeal for the mission was so much more important, he let Lazarus die. Some of y'all got some Lazarus. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Some of y'all got some Lazarus. I can't be available for you because I'm chasing something. I have to shut this down. I can't keep spending all this time. Oh, how deep do I want to go? Go deep as you need to go. Press on, I'm gonna leave you alone. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm leave you alone. That's okay. Help me. The deeper you go, the more you come. come. <laughs> right, man. Uh, Some of your Lazarus are even pulling you in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Hey. Violating the word of God, putting the business of God on the back burner to hang out with Lazarus. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> I'll move on. I'll move on. I'll move on. The deeper you go, the more you come. His zeal for God was so strong he let Lazarus die. Some of you got some people, you got some things in your way that's blocking your seal mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. You can't be available to God because you keep running back to Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Some stuff you're going to have to let die, y'all. Amen. Amen. Some stuff you're just going to have to let die and leave it to God to revive it. Leave it to God to revive it. Amen. Zeal is defined as passion for a cause. Mm -hmm. Zeal, passion mm -hmm. for a cause. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm passionate about my walk with God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zeal is defined as enthusiasm. You ought to be excited. Oh yeah. Amen. You ought to be excited. About the ministry. Hallelujah. If your zeal is hot. You ought to be excited about the ministry. Excited about what God is doing. Excited about the possibilities. That's why we say we come to church in a spirit of expectation. To keep your zeal burning hot. Yes. It is an enthusiasm. It is a passion. I'm passionate about this thing. You can feel when a person really cares about something. All right. You, you can feel when somebody loves art. You can feel when somebody loves music. You can feel when somebody loves dancing. You can feel yeah. when somebody loves hunting. You can feel when somebody loves cooking. You yeah. can feel passion. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can feel it. It's all over you. It's coming out your pores. You can feel passion. And blessed hope we got to get that type of passion about right. the ministry God has called us to steward. Folk ought to be able to see on you that you're on fire for God. They ought to see the fire on you. They ought to see it on you. When you talk about the scripture, they ought to see the love you have for this word. Don't never be lacking in zeal. Life has a way. Pouring water on your fire. Life has a way of Burning you out. Uh -huh. And when you get to church, you don't feel like praising. Uh -huh. Come on, God. That ain't passion. I thought you was Amen. passionate for the Lord. Amen. You don't let a little trouble take your passion away. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> let a little frustration take your passion away. Amen. God has gotten you out of trouble over and over again. And you let the same type of uh, trouble take your passion away. You get in a little trouble and you say, Lord, what am I going to do? Like he's never got you out before. You let a little storm take your passion away. All right. 
You let some hard times and hard circumstances take your passion away and you ain't never went hungry. You ain't never slept out the waters. You ain't never been without. God delivered you over and over again. But the next time trouble comes, you're wondering if God's going to get you out. Where's your passion? Where's your fire? If he did it before, he'll do it again. Where's your fire? Where's your fire? I will not never let an argument with First Lady stop me from preaching with my whole heart. Amen. Ain't nothing going on in my house gonna stop me from preaching because there's a fire on me on this thing. Amen. Amen. I could be mad at her, you wouldn't know it. I'm gonna preach heaven down anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks walk through the door with their own face. You can tell there was arguing on the way. My passion is too much. My fire is too much. I'm too on fire for the Lord to let these frivolous things, these light afflictions, get in the way of his business. All right. You can tell when people are going through something at home because the spirit of excellence ain't on them. Amen. Whatever you do, do it is unto the Lord in the spirit of excellence. Yes. And whenever somebody going through something at home, they come to church like this. Yep. Say it, Pastor. Uh-huh. Where's your passion? Come on. Where's your fire? Convict us. Talk about you love God. You're not trusting him. You're not doing nothing for him. You can feel passion when a person really cares about something. Can people feel not not what your mouth say? Come on. Come on. I learned in 11 years of pastoring, folks will tell you anything. Yeah. And their actions don't match their words. All right. <laughs> Can people feel your passion for the Lord? Can, can they feel that you've been in his presence? Can they feel that you spend time in your prayer closet? Because you can feel when somebody's got an anointing. You can feel when somebody spent time with the Lord. You can feel when somebody lives clean because they fear the Lord and they love him at the same time. Oh, yeah. You can feel when somebody is serious about their walk. Yeah. If folks on the fence about you, you ain't got no fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah bless up this word for us. If folks on the fence about you, you ain't got no fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point in life, minus close family, no one should be doubting that you saved. Amen. Minus close family because they knew you from before. Yeah, Come on, Pastor. Right, right. Come get, on, Pastor. Get past there. Hey, right. But at this point in your life, no one should be doubting are you saved. And if they are, where's your passion? Amen. Where's your passion? It is dangerous to become slowful in your zeal for God. Yeah. It is dangerous to become lazy mm -hmm. in your passion for God. And it's easy to get comfortable. It's easy. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. With work, mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. it's a full-time job. All of those are full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. All of those are full-time jobs. But, yeah, errands, parents. parents, some of us taking care of elderly parents. Yeah. You know, it's a lot going on. None of these things are being discounted. Right, right. Yeah. But what would I do without God? Amen. Come on. Amen. If he took his hand off me right now, I can't take care of mom. Right. If he took his hand off me right now, I can't be there for my wife. Yeah. Yeah. If he took his hand off me right now, I can't go to work. If he took his hand off me right now, I can't be there for my children. Right. So just because I got this stuff going on, I can't turn my back on. Where's your passion? Where's your passion? I got to go to work. If God takes his hands off you right now, work going to do you. Hey. <laughs> All right. They're going to find somebody else to take your spot. They're going to have a 10-second moment of silence. Yes. 
<laughs> we really like Jamal. He was always smiling. Anyway, y'all go get the tickets done. Come on. Right, right, right. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's all you gonna get. And if we've led a life putting God's real business on the back burner, because mm -hmm. just coming to church don't make you saved. Right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Just coming to church don't make you Amen. saved. All right. If we never had time to evangelize Loganville, Never had time to attend the school drive. Yeah. Never had time to go visit the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Never had time to go visit the prisons. Uh -huh. Never had time to go visit the nursing homes. Yes. Never yes. told nobody nothing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Never led an individual soul to Christ in your life, but you went to church. When you die, uh -huh. yeah. it's a little shaky. Yes. Yeah. It's a little shaky. Yeah. Go read what separates the sheep from the goat. Hey, that's good. Go read what separates the sheep from the goat. That'll tell you where your fire is. Because the sheep visit the sick. And the sheep visit the prisons. And the sheep, hallelujah, glory to God, they let people stay in their house. The sheep are hospitable. Jesus said, I need a place to stay. You gave me a place to stay. Yeah. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. When I was sick, you came and saw about me. Yes. When I was hungry, you fed me. Mm -hmm. If I said, y'all, let's go downtown to feed the homeless, how many folks would show up? Mm. Don't fool me now. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me check my schedule. Because you get some folks that volunteer quick and they say, oh, wait, I, I looked at my schedule and uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on that day, I'm going to be. This was it. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't make it. I'm going to be. But that's what separates sheep from the goat. From the goat. Amen. The sheep are going to heaven. The goats. God said, depart from me. I never knew you. You was in church every Sunday. You was a goat the whole time. Not the greatest of all time, just a goat. Uh, <laughs> not the greatest of all time, just a goat. You thought you was trying to blend in with the sheep, but you weren't doing sheep work. All right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Revelation 3.16 warns us, I know your deeds. It's Jesus talking. It's Jesus talking. It's Jesus talking. I know your deeds. That you are neither cold nor hot. Mm. It's a lot of church folks that's lukewarm. Lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Sit in the praise and worship service like this. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous for you. <laughs> this is Jesus talking. I wish you were either. Either one. Either. One or the other. Be cold. Just be out. Just be out. Yeah. Of course, he wants you to be on fire. Right. Right. Said I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You say I am rich, folks. How come rich people got money? The devil ain't bothering them. And neither is God. God said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Many people with money are poor in their spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't you know rich people take themselves out of here too? I was just about to say this. Mm -hmm. Rich people jump off bridges. Yeah. Yes, they do. Rich people put guns in their mouth. Yep. Yes, they do. Many rich people don't have peace. Amen. The peace that comes from this gospel. Amen. Come on. That's good peace. Church folk are looking at the rich. Trying to keep up with the Jones. They putting God's business on the back burner. I'll just halfway do it. Me showing up is good enough, right? And I just kind of throw something together. They should be happy I'm here. Hey. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you'd be surprised. A lot of church folk act like that. Amen. They should be happy I'm here doing the little bit I'm doing. Uh-huh. And that's all they're going to get is a little bit. God said, I wish you were hot or cold. Uh-huh. Because if you don't come to the house of God with that attitude, I'd rather you stay home. Stay in Amen. Amen. Luke warm and nasty. Mm-hmm. You ever try to drink lukewarm coffee? It's gross. Yes. Cold coffee <laughs> tastes better than lukewarm coffee. Ain't that strange? Yeah. <laughs> Cold coffee so good they got it now. Iced coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You get hot coffee or iced coffee. They ain't got lukewarm coffee. <laughs> lukewarm coffee is gross. Yeah. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. I just talk about me. I pass the full time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not part time. Mm-hmm. Full time. Full time. We don't yeah. have service twice a month or yeah. <laughs> every other Sunday or whatever the case. Mm-hmm. No, we're here every Sunday, every Wednesday. Yeah. Amen. I pastor full time. Yeah, Thursday. We're here a whole bunch. Four times a week, I believe. Yes. Pastor full time. Amen. Yes. I also work full time. Yes. And I'm not talking 40 hours, y'all. No. Right, right, right. No, on my job alone, I work 50 to 55 hours a week. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Plus the work required here. Yes. All right. Come on, Pastor. Yes. So that puts me at a good 60, 65, depending on the week. Yes. Plus not only do I work 65 hours a week, <laughs> I'm married. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. She needs time. Yes. And on top of that, I got little kids. Yes. They need time. Yes. I hit the teenage stage. I don't know what that's about. Ooh. Uh, right, right at his feet there. But you know, my mama used to have a saying when we was kids. You're not going to get on my nerves. Uh, cool. yeah. I'm going to get on yours. Yeah. Amen. Yes. All right. Amen. <laughs> You're not going to drive me crazy. I'm going to drive you crazy. Yes, and so it got to the point where we start staying out of the way. Yes. <laughs> I know that's right. That was a standard in my house that we had to meet mm-hmm. and we stayed out the way. Because okay. I know my parents, they look nice. Them folks is crazy. Okay. <laughs> They are crazy. So crazy we don't want no smoke. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. But my time, I'm pulled in a lot of different directions. Mm-hmm. All week long. Mm-hmm. And it's every day. I'm on a hamster wheel. This is 60, uh-huh. 65 hours a week. Just that's just life. Right. Okay? Right. <laughs> and that's just right. life. Yeah. All right. I don't phone it in here. Amen. Yeah. I don't text y'all and say, you know what, I'm tired. I, I ain't coming. <laughs> right. I may take one vacation a year, and that's not good. Right. Right. That's not good. Right. If I want to preach a long time, I got to do something about that. That's not good. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. But I may take one vacation a year. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm here. Amen. Amen. So in so many words, what's your excuse? Amen. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Mm. Even Jesus had all. He didn't feel like it. Mm-hmm. He had these moments when he did not want to do the work of the God, do the work of God. He had no issue with preaching. He had no issue with teaching. He had no issue with marketplace evangelism. These are things the church has a problem with. I challenge all of us every time we go to the store, tell somebody about God. Tell somebody about God. Amen. Anytime you go to the gas station, anytime you go to the store, tell somebody about God. Invite them to your church. Amen. 
Tell them about the work of the cross. Amen. Ask them if you can pray with them. Mm -hmm. That's ministry. This is just church. This is just a service. The real work, y'all, is out there. Amen. Yes, it is. The, Amen. the mission field is out there. Mm -hmm. When we leave church today and we go out to eat, you in the mission field. Mm -hmm. You stop for gas, you in the mission field. Mm -hmm. You know how many people, are, uh, how many Christians are literally afraid mm -hmm. to talk to people about the Lord. Well, I don't know how they're going to react. Jesus ain't care that talk about him. My passion is for God. It's not for people. My zeal is for God. It's not for people. I don't care if you don't like me. You don't want to hear about Jesus. That's on you. But I'm going to talk about it. Amen. All right. That's passion. That's passion. I don't care if you want to hear it. I'm saying it. Say it. And if that person don't receive it, I'm going to the next one. That's right. passion. Amen. You ever met a person that loves sales? Mm -hmm. They are <laughs> aggravating. <laughs> because they always be selling, no matter where they at. Yep. It's my two-year-old's birthday party. Relax, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Chill. You didn't get no sales in here. They always be selling. <laughs> That's Jesus had no issue with marketplace evangelism. These are things the church likes ill in. He had no problem praying with people or healing people. He had no issue with speaking the word, whether people wanted to hear it or not. He wasn't concerned if people liked him or not, or if they talked about him. That makes so many church folk just fall apart. They talking about me. I got delivered from that a long time ago. Amen. Talk. Amen. I don't care what you say about me. Talk. I don't care how you feel. Talk. I don't care if you don't like it. <laughs> you ain't got to like it. You ain't got to like me. You can talk. I talk. Talk. It don't bother me none. And when I hear what you say, I'm going to go home and eat. Amen. <laughs> and pray for you. And pray for you. I'm going to go home and eat. Lay down and sleep like a baby. I'm not laying in my bed wondering how people feel about me. What? Right. Say it. Right. <laughs> right. Jesus didn't care. Folks talked about him. He didn't care. Right. They told him they was going to stone him. He left for a little while. He came back. Looked the same folks in the face and said, you damn thieves. <laughs> <laughs> This house right here, this ain't my house. This is God's house. Amen. Amen. 
And anything God wants this house to do, blessed hope, I need you to get this in your faith. Anything God wants this house to do, God is going to provide because this is his house. Amen. Amen. Whatever the vision, whatever the plan, don't you worry about no money. Say, Lord, this your house. Yes. That's what I tell them when bills come. I say, Lord, this your house. Mm -hmm. This your house. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's your house. We're doing better than this on the mega church. Amen. 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 The devil couldn't stop him. Lack of resources couldn't stop him. People walking away from him couldn't stop him. Some church people go chase Lazarus. People not believing in him didn't stop him. Threats against his life, they wanted to stone him. Yes. Very early on in the, in the ministry of Jesus, they tried to stone him, but he got away from him. Uh -huh. Death threats oh. couldn't put his fire out. <laughs> Couldn't put his fire out. Hallelujah. Betrayal didn't stop him. Hallelujah. He handpicked the disciple mm -hmm. that turned on him. Oh, yeah. Amen. We lose a friend, we cry for months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's par for the course. Mm -hmm. Betrayal didn't stop him. Being abandoned by people that said they would die with him. Thomas said it. Mm -hmm. Peter said it. Let us die with him. Abandon him. Mm -hmm. Didn't stop him. He was still saving souls while hanging on the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nails in his wrists and his feet, y'all. That's passion. Good. Ministering literally while bleeding, y'all. That's passion. Some of us, when we start going through stuff, we ain't got no capacity for nobody else. Amen. Come on, Pastor. I'm mad, so I don't have nothing for nobody. Amen. Jesus hanging on the cross said, hey, on this day, you'll be with me in paradise. He was still doing the work of the Lord. Yes. yes. Ministering while bleeding. And along this walk, you have to minister while you're bleeding. Parents know. Parents know you have to encourage your kid while you falling apart on the inside. Parents know you got to minister while bleeding. Yes. Jesus was passionate for the cause. He was always in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Knowing he would be arrested, he did not delay being in the place of meeting. The Garden of Gethsemane was known to be their place of meeting. Mm -hmm. That's how Judas knew how where to tell the soldiers to go. Amen. Because they oftentimes met in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. If it were me, and I knew I was about to be arrested, and they was going to do all they did to Christ, you know, and I knew what was going to happen. Right. Y'all, we're going to a new place today. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to be that type of stuff. We're going to be over there. No, we, we ain't going to the, the known place. No, 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 no. Let's go down the street somewhere. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> But church folk are so full about stuff they know God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was timely. He wasn't slowful. Yes. He said the son of man must be lifted up. Yes. Friend, what you do, do it quickly. Yes. So that the son of man may be glorified. Y'all, yes. let's go to the place of meeting. I just need y'all to watch and pray with me for a little while. Because my time is near. He's in the garden praying, sweating blood. Yes. He was not slowful about being there. Knowing what was to come. Amen. Give me something. I'm going to do something to it. Knowing what was to come. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. While you're going through, just be silent. Amen. You may be going through something in life, just be silent. You can see counsel. Godly counsel, but, but don't be complaining. Yeah. All right. Don't be complaining. Don't be fussing and cussing and moaning and groaning. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened 
not his mouth. Blessed hope, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Being about our father's business don't always feel good. And sometimes it feels like you're losing. Yes, it does. Ask me how I know. Sometimes I had to pay the rent here with my own money, many times. Sometimes it feels like you're losing. Sometimes I've asked myself, why do I keep coming down here? Don't be slothful in the business of God. No, this is not a big mega ministry, but I'm blessed. Amen. I am blessed. Hallelujah. I am blessed. Yes. Never be. 
be lacking in zeal. Keep your passion. Keep your passion. You got to defend it. Amen. You, you got to defend your passion for ministry. You got to defend your passion for God. You got to defend it because life will make you forget about God. It'll make you turn your back on Him. It'll try. Life will beat you up so bad you'll wonder if God is anywhere around. Amen. And your fire will go. lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Yes. Serving the Lord. Yes. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. That's how you keep your fire from going out. Knowing that God got you out before he'll get you out again. Amen. Amen. Well, I needed a new car. I said, well, Lord, we've been here before. Amen. <laughs> you know I need a new car. Amen. You know that. Amen. Lord, you told me August was going to be a month of testimony. Yes, Amen. I trust you. I come into agreement with what you said. I trust you, Lord, and amen. Amen. And I put it in God's hands. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. He's faithful to keep his yes. word. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I'm telling you the same thing. It's a month of testimony. Each and every time. It's, it's a month of testimony. All month long. It's a month of testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ask God, yeah, what you will. Ask God what you will. Ask him what you will. Ask him what you will. Ask him what you will. It's a month of testimony. I'm telling you. Amen. I'm finished. 